Um, and of course, the disappointment that AJ Fury is not happening again. Um, you must get this question all the time, Eddie. People wanting to know, OK, well, it's going to be delayed a little bit, but when is it going to happen? Do you know, I think uh, with the fights coming up, obviously Fury's got to fight Wilder and AJ's got to fight Usyk. The disappointment of that last time, and probably, to be honest with you, the, the, the sort of distrust that I have for, that, for a lot of people on that team... I just rather focus on the Usyk fight. I, the, the aim is always going to be the same, to win the undisputed championship, and that will never change. So it will always be there. It will always be my job. It will always be our intention to try and make that fight. But right now, you know, again, we, we work so hard to get that over the line. We got it in place. It was taken away from us. That's okay. That's life. That's business. But really, if we keep looking at that fight and not looking at the Usyk fight, mm. we might be wasting our time anyway. So... Hopefully, AJ beats Usyk. Hopefully, while uh, Fury beats Wilder, and then we can just make that fight. You know, we've got pretty much a deal in place from from the last conversations that I think still works, and everyone would be happy with. You know, I do believe that Tyson Fury wants the fight with Anthony Joshua, and I know that AJ wants that fight more than ever. But there's certainly people in the team that I think don't want the fight. If you listen to the comments during the build up. You know, it was there, there was no enthusiasm. It was just us out there trying to do this deal, trying to get it over the line. And and maybe I should have spotted that, but we were very focused to try and make it happen. I presumed everyone would want the biggest fight in boxing, but hey ho. Um, the only good thing I'll say is, and and I'm not saying Fury Wild is a cracker, but it's still, you know, it's it's intriguing. And AJ against Usyk is a really good fight. So at least we've got two good fights mm. building up to that fight, rather than oh now. You know, and if it all goes well, fine. Eddie, when, you, when you're looking at February, March? I think February, yeah. We always wanted to do it in December, but I think yeah. with AJ fighting September 25th, Fury now delayed October. until October. I think February is more realistic. Um, you know, they had, a, they had a huge offer from Saudi Arabia to do the fight there. You know, we talked off air about, you know, the possibility of staging that fight in different countries. And ultimately, in, in, the, in, in the fight game, which yeah. is extremely dangerous. And, you know, oh, these absolutely. guys are putting themselves on the line. It is about generating as much money for the fight as possible. And there's no point petering around that and pretending there's mm. not. But, you know, with fans back in the UK, is that an option? Mm. Las Vegas, you know, we'll see. But first things first, let's just beat Usyk at yeah, first. Because yeah. if that... If yeah. that <laughs> If that doesn't go to plan, <laughs> then we might as well forget about it. I was um, I was listening. I mentioned this just before the break. Um, Gary Neville does a, a show called The Overlap, and he was interviewing Anthony Joshua, and, and Joshua was just saying, "Look, everything from our side was in place. The contracts, the the will was all there. We thought it was going to happen for a fighter as well. For that to happen and for things to change up, um, and like you say, a great fight lined up, but." How frustrating is it when, when you focus so much on one thing and it's going to be the biggest thing in boxing and then that goes again? I think in boxing, nothing's ever a given. So whilst the focus was always Tyson Fury, you know, there's always that doubt that it might not happen. To be honest with you, he was more pessimistic than certainly I was. You know, he, he just felt in the back of his mind they didn't really want that fight. I actually felt that a lot of them did want that fight. I flew out to Vegas, I sat down with Tyson Fury face to face. He told me he wanted the fight and I, I believed him. But AJ was good. You know, I, I've got to say, I was pretty down in the dumps for a few days when that news broke. And he, he sort of gave me a little a kick up the backside and said, listen, you've done great. You know, you did everything you can. Let's just move on and let's plan our career. So he's um, he's focused for the Usyk fight. He's he's had the ups and downs of, you know, the Andy Ruiz fight. And he, he knows what it's like to lose a fight that he shouldn't lose. And he doesn't want to make that same mistake again. So... Um, he's a tremendous person to work with. He's a great role model to any uh, kid, any young fighter. His dedication to the sport is unparalleled. Um, and, you know, he's, uh, I believe he's the best heavyweight in the world. How long do you think he can stay in boxing for? He said that to me the other day, actually. He said, you know, how long do you think I should fight for? He's, 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 a, he's a big thinker, right? And he, he loves to just, he's a very deep thinker, very intelligent, self-educated and, you know, he just messaged me the other day and said, how long do you think I should fight for? I said, for how long you have the love for the sport? Because it's such a dangerous sport. The minute you start fighting without desire, the minute you start fighting just for the money, you have to stop this game because it's too dangerous to be messing around without that will and without mm. that Finding that drive yeah. every day. He is so driven, you know, and I think he has so much more, so many more improvements to make I, you know, it'll always be him who calls time, but I, I don't see him going anywhere for five years minimum. You know, I, he loves what he does, but it's also a huge sacrifice, you know, on the body, on the mind, mm. you know, to even to family. I mean, relationships. He's, yeah, yeah, because he's so driven. 
he doesn't he doesn't have time for that. I mean, he's such a big family man, but he's so obsessed with the sport. It's all he does, you know. And even when he's not training, it's about his nutrition. It's about mm. rehabilitation. He's getting his body worked on, and it's like it's just an it's an ongoing um, strategy to improve. That's all he wants to do every day is improve. Yeah. And he's like I said, he's got such a great mindset. And Eddie, any any young boxer out there be loving all these fights and looking into it. And there must be some great youngsters coming through. Really uh, good, really yeah, good, really good. Young. And we're seeing that in the Olympics now. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, you have got the McCormack brothers. Um, you know, you have got Ben Whitaker. You got Galau Your Fire. You know, across the, the females as well. You got some great fighters coming through. And this really stems from opportunities within the the elite level of the sport. Mm. Now, when we talk about grassroots participation, that has to come from schools, that has to come from local clubs, yeah. that has to come from government schemes. But ultimately, every young kid wants to get involved in, with a sport where they see the elite level guys, you know, out there in front of huge crowds, have a dream, making have big a dream money. To get there, yeah. Exactly. So, well, it's like so, footballers, really. And, you see footballers who earn lots of money and playing in front of big crowds. The Euros would be great for young people. Uh, Without a doubt, players and boxing is very similar. Yeah, and, and with those opportunities. But AJ's, I mean, you know, I, I, we've done a great job, Matrim, you know, for boxing. But the job that AJ's done, you know, you need an individual yes. like that. You need a role model. You need an ambassador. And he's the first guy mm. where I've seen people in schools saying, "I want to be like Anthony Joshua." Mm. You know, and that, by the way, that doesn't mean you have to just be a fighter. You know, the way that he carries himself, what yeah. boxing has taught him. And I always beat the drum about the role that local amateur boxing clubs play within the community. The best place to send your kid. Trust me. Oh, absolutely. Discipline, respect, manners, hard work. Mm. That's where you learn it. I and I was having a conversation yeah. with someone uh, the other day about the problem with the younger generation. Now, I don't want to go too GD. This is another show. But, you know, sport is the foundation to everything. Sport teaches you everything you need to mm. about life. Winning, losing, discipline, respect, manners. And and there's not enough young people now participating in sport. Everything's TikTok, everything's Instagram, every, mm. and it's it's toxic. Sport has to be pushed into you know, I've got two kids and I just I relentlessly mm. right, come on, there's got a cricket camp next week. Oh, there's a the golf thing, there's yeah, hockey, yeah. there's mm. wh whatever we can do. Because when they're not on their phone, you know, when they're <laughs> when they're participating, when they're competing, yeah, when they're having to show respect, when it gets tough. You know, when you've got to come back from defeat, these, these are the kind of things mm. that sport teaches you about life. And, and I'm really worried that that generation um, is slipping totally away right. from that generation. Well, I went to the Islingham uh, Boxing mm. Club and look, for the communi community, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's not just that. You've got all different ages in there doing classes and you've got young kids over there and, it, you know, that's what you want but to see. But all of those kids, if they weren't in that club, oh, absolutely. they'd be up to no good. Mm. Yeah. No, you're right. I'm I'm exactly the same. When I was younger, all of my values really, I think, came from playing sport, but all my confidence as well from actually getting out good there and point. competing and then all my friends, like all of those good things, it really, I mean, listen to us. What are we this morning? I love this. It's like a mother's meeting. I'm very much enjoying it. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10, on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.